So what we're about to see is a text where a guy did a little bit wrong and got punished the absolute maximum. And as you watch this, it may appear that it's unfair, and that's true. It may appear that he got unlucky, and that's also true. But the fact of the matter is there were things he could have done to not get as unlucky and to handle the situation. So let's look at how a good interaction went very, very wrong and exactly what could have been done to correct it. So we start off, this was actually a text from a cold approach. So we met this girl, it appears based on the timestamp that is probably in day game, got her number, texted his name, got her name back, and then they proceed from there. So it starts with, hey, this is his name, I'm her name. Okay, great, they've introduced themselves. Okay, about our plans to meet, are you free tomorrow afternoon? I had in mind coffee tea at one of the various places, and this is logistical, so whatever. So basically I had in mind coffee or tea at a particular place. All right, so this is a really interesting text to start with. Um, in a way, it's kind of good because if you had a really good initial interaction and you definitely agreed plans, it's not a bad idea to just assume that's the case. Because um, if you assume that's the case and you're correct, it's gonna go to plans very, very quickly. And since a lot of girls are lost in texting, a lot of you know good sets are lost through texting, it makes sense, especially if you're not great at texting or not entirely confident in your texting, to kind of cut to the chase a little bit more and be a little bit more direct. And so this type of texting where it's almost like you're just scheduling the plans, almost like you're acting as your own personal assistant in a way, is not a terrible way to go. Um, when you're starting out being fairly direct. So I actually don't mind this too much. He is a little bit too specific about it, um, I think, but in general, this type of text, I think, is, is, is generally pretty good. So she responds positively with, coffee sounds lovely, but then she says, I have a paper due this weekend, but I'll be free next week. So that's largely positive. It's more positive than negative. In terms of her actual attitude and willingness to hang out, it's all good. Um, but you do have a problem now, which is, uh, something to do with time, right? Because you have a gap between now and when you make the plans. <clears throat> and the problem is, if you don't message her between now and then, then it gets cold and stale and it seems weird because you just had this nice interaction, you're on her mind, you agreed plans, and now you have a week to essentially kill, right? You have time to kill. But if you treat it as killing time and you just do small talk, well, it tends to be that the interaction will go backwards or get boring or there's just too much that can go wrong with it, you lose tension. So that's not very good either. My general procedure for something along these lines is that I want to go ahead and tease and banter a little bit, but I don't want to be messaging a ton of times per day. I don't want to be messaging 16 times per day, at least not with me initiating. If she wants to text a lot, that's fine, and I can be responsive to it um, to a certain degree. <clears throat> but you have to understand that if it's going to go for seven or nine days between you getting the number and you making plans with her, and you have to message her six times a day, that's what 42 to um, 42 to 54 messages you're sending, that's a lot of opportunities for it to go wrong and it's a lot of opportunities for things to fade. I much prefer if I'm just messaging her every couple days or maybe daily at the most, that kind of thing. Um, and I like to leave some of the plans vague and undefined so that as I'm texting, there's a reason to text, right? There's clarifying the plans or figuring something else out with the plans we've already established. Because if you have the plans, which is almost the, height, the highest place you can be in texting other than going on the plans, and then you start talking about small talk, well, then you have to reclose for the plans again. So it's nice to have elements there. <clears throat> and this is actually why getting very specific about the exact location of the plans early on isn't the greatest, because that, that leaves him fewer texts in reserve. But like I said, the previous text was fine, and so far this is good, but he does have an interesting obstacle in timing. So let's see how, let's see how he handles it. So he says, okay, I got improv Tuesday night, but Monday and Wednesday I'm free 6 p.m. or later. And this is generally pretty decent, um, assuming that you're pretty close to the weekend. So I guess this is, you know, it, it's less than seven days, it's maybe four or five days, something like that. He's trying to go for the plans. He's making a general, um, a general push in that direction. Again, I wouldn't even mention a specific time. I might say like, I'm free in the evening. Because again, I want to keep those texts in reserve. I want to keep, you know, the text of, oh, I get off at 6 p.m. as something else you can send without it being needy later and something else that's necessary um, at a later time. So again, keeping the plans more vague would be good. But overall, this is good. He's saying he has plans a certain day. So he's, he's seeming kind of not overly eager and not available all the time. Like he actually has a life, but he is giving some availability. So, so far, not too bad. So then she says, oh, I actually meant next weekend, if that's okay with you, uh, I need to wrap up some end of semester things over the week, 
right? So this is even more annoying because now instead of it being early next week, now it's going to be the full next weekend. So now we're talking, we're back to what I mentioned before, which is at least like seven to nine days. So we have this, this lengthy, lengthy period of time. Also, the vibe I'm getting from this, while it is positive, you're clearly not priority number one in her life, which is kind of okay. But I mean, because you only met her briefly and she has whatever's going on in her life, but it's not the absolute greatest, right? It seems like she, you know, is not viewing you as particularly scarce. Um, and she's not viewing it as like something she absolutely must do right now or something that's, that's moved to the top of her priority list. Because I'm sure that while she may be studying, doing end of semester things, I'm sure still she still is finding time for some of her friends, still finding time occasionally for her family, still finding time for the gym, et cetera, et cetera, right? So if you are more of a priority than those things, um, you might be put ahead of those things. So it's a little bit of an indicator. So even though it's positive, you should take that with a grain of salt. But let's see how he handles it. So he says, sure, grades before boys, I respect that. What's the paper about? Um, and this is very like normal, kind of what a good solid friend would text. And it's very encouraging and it's very positive, but I don't like it entirely. I don't like the frame it sets because yes, grades over boys is something her parents would tell her as good advice. However, if they knew you and knew how amazing you were, would they tell you that as good advice regarding you? No, they wouldn't because you're amazing, right? And so, it's sort of low value in a way that you're so quick to assume that she's making a wise decision by putting you off, right? You should not believe that. Now, you shouldn't be reactive or angry or, you know, how I mentioned in the previous text that it's not the, it's a positive sign, but not the most positive sign from her. You certainly don't want to be bringing it up in a negative way or reacting to it or anything like that. But you also don't want to become as big a part of the problem as her, right? So you don't want to be reactive to the problem and make it worse that way, but you also don't want to agree with the frame that's not helping you so much that you actually push that frame further along. And so I really don't like it for that reason. Um, the what's the paper about thing is kind of okay given that you're going to have to talk to her and you know fill in text between now and the date and it looks like seven to nine days. It's decent to have a topic, but be careful. Be careful for a couple different reasons. Number one, be careful because it's a boring topic right? It's a topic that is not sexual or leading to flirtation. So um, you could get, you know, buried in a lot of minutia and mundane conversation that's going to kill the tension. And also there's a possibility that it's not going to be something that's a really a pleasant topic for her or something she wants to elaborate on a lot. So it's okay um, to generally talk, but just be careful about the subject and be careful where it goes. And, and this is going to come up in a little more detail in a minute. So the girl's answer is contemporary American fiction. So Roth, Morris, and that kind of thing. Um, though I don't exactly share my professor's literary taste, so I'm not hyped about it. So that's all fine. And by the way, I don't know that it matters, but this is someone outside of the United States. This is someone who, from an English-speaking country outside the United States. I'll give you that much just for context, which is why it's Ameri contemporary American fiction, not just contemporary fiction. Not, I don't know if it matters, but for whatever, for whatever it does in terms of telling you the girl's blueprint or telling you information about her, if that information is useful in understanding this, I'll give you that information. Um, so now you're in a discussion about literature potentially, or you're in a discussion about writing or books or whatever. And here's where you have to be very, very careful because this is potentially an area where this girl is focused. She's clearly taking a university class of some kind or, or university or beyond class in this particular area. So she has decided to take what would be considered an advanced class in this area. This is probably some area of focus or passion, or at least something she cares about a little bit even if she doesn't care that much about her, her professor's taste. Maybe a context for you, right, would be like if you were mentioning, you know, your love of basketball or something like that, and the girl talks to you about how she likes to watch like Wayne Gretzky highlights or something like that, right? Where it's just like she's trying, but she just got it wrong, right? You have to be a little careful about this. Now, what this guy does is not nearly as bad as that. It's not nearly as obvious as that. But in a subtle way, it's the same issue. It's the same unnecessary display of incompetence. He says, I guess if both authors only recently died, their work still considered contemporary. And one note here, by the way, is a grammatical one, right? So it's either works are still considered contemporary or works um, work is with an apostrophe or work is. So now that you know this girl's into literature, you might want to make your text messages more grammatically correct. That's number one thing. Um, but the second thing here is he's not showing an, an, an understanding of what a contemporary uh, American fiction author is. And you don't necessarily have to know that, but getting it wrong doesn't help you. So it's, it's, it's just a, a, a pond you don't have to swim in, right? And this isn't particularly bad. Um, but then the next part is kind of bad. He says, if I was doing it and had a choice of the author, I'd pick Chuck Palahniuk. 
um, because he's got interesting uh, books and you can watch his interview on Joe Rogan. That's my contemporary. So I actually agree with this guy. I think that I think Chuck Palahniuk's a great author. I think he's very, very fun to read. I think he's, you know, I, I, I've always been a fan of not the books they assign in school, but the books that are, are that I like to read, etc. So I'm actually with this guy. However, if this girl is at all a literary snob, she's going to see this as very low brow and not getting it, right? Because Chuck Palahniuk, while he may be a great author, is not considered a, a great author in literary circles, and he's certainly not considered like a notable, noteworthy author you must read to be in the know and to be educated. So um, he's kind of indicating himself as lowbrow in a way that he doesn't have to, and especially when it indicates his reason for it is because they were on the Joe Rogan thing. It, he's, he's definitely saying, I'm not an expert in this field, right? So he's trying to relate, he's trying to, to have something to talk about, and I don't even mind it, but he is running that risk. Now, here's why I say he got unlucky. Because nine times out of 10, the girl would actually be fine with this and appreciate it. But one time in 10, she's going to judge him for it, right? And he might run into that one time in 10. So it's just not a necessary risk to take. Let's see what goes on from here. So the girl says, contemporary is roughly World War II to the present. So if I had my pick, I'd most likely, or it'd most likely be Capote or Plath or Tart. Um, but alas, we had to choose from the syllabus dictated by the prof. The two I mentioned are already the cream of the crop, so to speak. Uh, he says, yeah, and then she says, yeah, I always like to look up interviews of my favorite authors when they're available. It's almost like taking a behind-the-scenes look at how their work came into being. You see so much of what lies under the tip of the iceberg, right? So here, her response is largely positive, actually, like a nice, you know, he got he got lucky-ish um, in the sense that she she liked the idea of, you know, reading the, you know, seeing the author's interview. She liked the idea of digging deeper into literature, um, et cetera, et cetera. Now she was a little bit smug about, you know, what literature is good and what literature is bad. So he did run into that a little bit, but more, it, it did more, more good than harm, right? It seems to have worked well so far, but again, just, he should know he's in dangerous waters. He's, he's kind of on thin ice, so to speak. Um, so let's see how, where he goes from here. So here he goes. Wow. Sylvia Plath stuck her head in an oven and poisoned herself after problems with her partner. That's some crazy shit. I hope it's not a blueprint for our romance. And then he says George Alwa had tuberculosis in his final years. Uh, that's what his character Winston in 1984 had. Yeah, author background is definitely enlightening. Plath probably included a part about baking cakes in her work. Okay, so this is tough because this girl who seems to be pretty into literature indicated Sylvia Plath as one of her favorite authors that she'd like to do work on, like to, like to have done for her paper. So this is possibly a subject she cares about, possibly a subject she feels strongly about, et cetera. And this person is kind of making fun of that person. Like imagine if someone took your hero and said negative things about him or her. You might have a negative reaction to that. So this is like, he was already kind of on thin ice in just in this arena of talking where he doesn't know as much as she does. Like you want to structure the conversation so that you're talking on subjects you're knowledge about and you're the leader and you have value in, not so much ones where she has value. Um, and it's possible to let her teach you, it's possible to show curiosity, et cetera, but you certainly don't wanna be um, stepping out of line in areas where you don't know what out of line is. So he was already in dangerous territory, but this is a big risk. And also, um, to be fair, like it's a sensitive topic too, because it's it's a suicide thing, right? And even said stuck her head in the oven, like that that just sounds like you know what I mean. Like that's that's pretty it's a pretty crazy way to commit suicide. I don't know if that's literally what happened, but it sounds kind of metaphorical or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, um, this is more risky than his last one. So he did the last one, and it, it was like you know, it had a potential reward, but the risk was kind of higher than would have liked, and that it worked out. He got lucky, and or he got non unlucky. Let's just say. But now he's doubling down. He's like, okay, that worked. Let me go even further with it, right? Um, and let's see how that works out. I will make one point here, which he says that's some crazy hit. Uh, shit. I hope that's not a blueprint for our romance. Um, I do like that he's at least trying to, um, at least trying to keep it man to woman, at least keep some flirtation going. So I appreciate the effort there. It's a, it's a weird choice of timing and subjects, but it is good that he at least has that in his mind. So conceptually that part's okay. But let's look at how this message is received. And this message is not received well. I prefer you not joke about that. She died in her horrific circumstances. I'm not gonna read this whole thing, but basically this girl gets extremely, extremely triggered, extremely upset about this reference to um, 
to her, her author who she likes killing herself, which I guess makes sense. Although I do think that she probably overreacts here, but he could have known that he was definitely, you know, poking the bear a little bit. He could have known that there was a chance this would have happened. Um, but I think this is overkill. I think this girl went way, way, way too far with it. Um, but anyway, um, she's also very knowledgeable clearly about these events. Um, and then it continues. Um, I don't know about baking cakes at the time of her death. Um, all this stuff about her getting screwed over. So all this just negative, 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 negative. And so now this this interaction, that the live interaction was positive. The texting interaction was positive. You have tentative plans. Now you have this like just gushing geyser of negativity, right? And now you have to deal with this. Um, and so it's now become a very difficult situation from what should have been a good one because of some risks that were taken. Um, let's look how we continue from here.